My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, I welcome you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Tonight's reflection will come from Book of Psalm 30. Book of Psalm 30. And the theme of our contemplation is, You have lifted me up. You have lifted me up. Let's go into prayer. Loving Father in heaven, I, you and what is seven, stand before your presence to thank you for lifting us up tonight. You sent us your only begotten Son, the Emmanuel God with us, to be with your children to the end of this year and usher us into the new year. Jesus, we are grateful that we are alive to celebrate the Christmas with you. It is your week. It is your celebration. But by virtue of our baptism, we are co-heirs in the Lord's vineyard. You have made us to be kingly, to be priestly and prophetic because we are baptized and we have become the adopted children of God. We are beckoning on you tonight, Father, to lift us up. You have lifted up the fallen humanity and have given us dignity, dignity through the incarnation. Yes, Lord, our dignity lies in your incarnation. And so, Father, I present before you tonight all our families that are seeking your face. There are many families whose health condition have silenced Lift them up, Father. Some are longer, no longer walking because of their health situation. Father, lift them up tonight. So went into early retirement because of their health condition. Abba, Father, lift them up tonight. Put smile on their faces and reassure them of your divine healing torch. Some of them are feeling abandoned and forgotten by you, my God. We assure them of your blessedness and presence. You are God of impossibility. You have solution to every situation in our lives. Father, come to the assistance to rescue them. Let the dry bones rise again in Jesus' name. Let the dry bones rise again in Jesus' name. Let the weak bodies be filled with your life in Jesus' name. Let the weak bodies be filled with Jesus' life in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the barren women and men be fertile. And bear children in Jesus' name. Let the fallen business boom again. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let the young men and women that are right for marriage. Be motivated and inspired. To get into that divine mandate. To wed in the church. And be blessed with fertility in the mighty name of Jesus. To increase and multiply in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, extend your blessing to the farmers. Let the farmers that sow in tears reap in joy and reap in joy. Let the barren land be fertile. So many countries depend on harvesting from their farmland. But so many countries are now facing a drought. We pray that you fertile the land. Send down your rain in many countries that are looking for rain. Cheer them up. Leave them up, Father. Motivate your people. We need your divine inspiration. Let there be justice and peace in our land. 
Let there be equity and love among nations. Father, you provide the air we breathe and you rain down your rain on earth. Do it once again for your people. Father, bring, bring blessings upon the children you have given us today. Many families are thanking you for blessing them with many children. We pray that many people, children that are depressed be lifted up in the mighty name of Jesus. Lift up the children that are no longer seeing life as what living. For some, life is meaningless. For some, life does not worth anything. Some are depressed. Some are recovering from trauma. Some are facing domestic abuse, divorce, and separation. Father, so many families are on edge. Some are choking and drowning because of the issues they are going through, Father. Lift them up. Assure them of hope. Render your blessing upon them one by one. May they breathe life. May they see the sign of hope and love again in their marriage. Father, let this night be a night of blessedness. Night that your spirit will motivate us and inspire us again. Teach us to encourage one another. Teach us to lift one another in prayer. Encourage us to lift up one another. Many people feel abandoned by their siblings, by their peers, by their partners. Father, revive broken homes, restore peace. Let your peace reign. Lift off our spirit tonight, Father. Father, bless Marvin and the Kano. Deliver that young man, Father, free from the incarceration, the prison yard, because he's speaking about the freedom of his own people. So many young men and women are also incarcerated because of that. Grant freedom to those youths in our land and many other freedom fighters in many countries that are genuinely looking for the freedom, equity, and justice of their own people. In so many countries that are at war, many people do not celebrate Christmas. So many people died on Christmas Day because the enemies of progress, enemies of Jesus Christ, anti-Christ, they want to inflict pain upon Christians all over the world. And many countries are sponsoring such evil acts. Father, heal and console your children. Bring blessing and grace upon your children. Heal the wounded heart. Many hearts are bleeding. Many people lost their loved ones. They are depressed and life is not meaningful for them. Father, it is only you, my God, that can liberate your children from captivity. Many are facing spiritual warfare. How can someone be changing job because he or she is hearing voices? Such people are restless. 
They don't keep one job. They'll be hearing voices to leave that house, to leave that job, and they're depressed. They're afraid. What kind of life is this, Father? Some are asking questions. Some are feeling that the, the, the evil spirits are around them. They can't even explain what's going on in their life. Some are taking medication. And it has changed their, their life. They're no longer the same. They don't know whether to stop or not to stop. Father, lift them up. Cheer them up. So many families that have uh, autistic children, some of them are restless. Some of them don't know what to do. Let your Holy Spirit empower them. Father, bless them. Lift them up, cheer them up every day. Bless your people that call upon your name. Lift up your people that have been pulled down because of one thing or the other. Some are depressed because they have been filling exams. May they pass the exams, Father. May they pass their board exams in the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be reconciliation in many families. Many siblings are no longer talking to each other. Let the coming of Emmanuel bring peace. Husband and wife are uh, in the same room, the same house. For years, they are not divorced, they are not separated, but what's going on? Some are separated, but what's going on? Even under this cold weather, they are still separated. Father, the devil is knocking down many families. But your spirit will unite many families. Deliver them from family destroyers. Free them from diabetic attack for many people that are suffering from diabetes. Heal them, Father. Some people are running temperature, high blood pressure. Stabilize them, Father. Some have fibro and they're afraid to go for surgery. May they seek for second opinion and see what God can do for them. Here are the people that are suffering from cancer, prostate cancer. Many cancer cells that are triggered by hormones and many things in our body, Father. You were able to calm down the ocean, Father, stabilize the cells that trigger many diseases in our bodies. In the mighty name of Jesus. You told us in John 10 that you have come that you may have life. Not sickness, but life. Grant healing to your children. Let's call upon your name. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Child of God, how are you? Children of the light, how are you? Tell your brother, your God will lift you up. Tell your sister, God, he will lift you up. When God is lifting you up, do you lift others up? 
How many times do you check on your brother or your sister? How many times do you pick your brother or your sister's phone calls? A phone call can cheer someone up. Giving your time to your brother or your sister can save life. There was a, a family that listened to my message last week. Outside this America, they saw it on the internet. They tracked my email and sent me an email. Say, Father, we don't know you, but your message lifted us up. You don't know what happens in one's life. So many people may see you and you give them joy. So many people you hear your voice and you make their day. Money is not everything, even though we need money. But those little things, Jesus is very very happy when we do little things. He who is faithful in small things will be faithful in bigger things. Mm-hmm. Start from little things. Things you can do for your brother or your sister to lift him or her up. Some people don't have time for other people. When your brother calls you, you say you don't have time. When your sister calls you, you say you don't have time. When will you have time? When will you have time for your brother? When will you have time for your sister? When will you have time for your husband or wife? When will you have time for your in-laws and friends? Try to lift someone up this week. Pray that God will teach you or show you how to do it. Lift somebody up. Cheer somebody up. Lift somebody up. Cheer somebody up. I called a few families and they said, Oh, Father, you remember us? I said, Yeah. I check on my sheep, I check on my flock, as the Spirit directs me. He said, Father, thank you so much. And they start telling their problem. Sometimes we can be like uh, the widow of Zarephath. The widow of Zarephath did not even know that God was thinking about her and her child. She was looking at the kitchen and looking at her food and it was about to run out, run down. And the woman was preparing the last meal for her and her child to eat and die. Unknown to her that God was thinking about her and sent Elijah. Elijah came and put more confusion in the life of that woman and start demanding the food. The woman said, this was the last I had. And Elijah said, give me that one too. The woman looked at Elijah. And maybe the woman knew who he was. He gave him the food. And said, they can as well go and die. But they did not die. As Elijah was eating the food, the wheat was uh, increasing and multiplying. Oil did not finish. The wheat did not finish. The woman was surprised. 
As Elijah was eating the food, everything was doubled. God has sense of humor. Your case may not be like that of the woman of Zarephath. God can change your cause. God can lift you up in many ways. God can send your friend to call you. God may even uh, uh, disturb someone that has been owing you for many years to send that money back to you. And you might have forgotten about the money. And all of a sudden, somebody calls you on the phone and asks you your address and send you the check or ask for your bank account and be apologizing. You never know how God will lift you up. Maybe you are having problem in your office. And then your manager says, come back. We are calling you back. God can lift you up in many ways. Our God is a mysterious God. He does his own thing in his own way. Sometimes we want God to act the way we want. But God's ways are not our ways. And that will bring us to reflect on the psalm of today. Psalm 30. And verse 1 says, I will exalt you, Lord, for you lifted me out of the death and did not let my enemies gloat over me. Look at that. Verse 2. Lord my God, I called to you for help, and you healed me. You, Lord, brought me up from the realm of the dead. You spared me from going down to the pit. Sing the praises of the Lord, you his faithful people. Praise his holy name, for his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. When I felt secure, I said, I will never be shaken. Lord, when you favored me, you made my royal mountain stand firm. But you hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, Lord, I called. To the Lord I cried for mercy. What is gained if I am silent? If I go down to the peak? Will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your faithfulness? Hear, Lord. And be merciful to me. Lord, be my help. You turn my will into dancing. You remove my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. That my heart may sing your praises. And not be silent. Lord, my God, I'll praise you forever. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Child of God, when we listen to the message of the scripture, every day, we hear new messages. We are refreshed. The psalmist started by saying, that I will praise the Lord. Why? Because God lifted him out of the depths. 
and did not let the enemies gloat over him. That's why he wants to praise the Lord. So the question is, so when, when God does not lift you up, you, wanna, you don't want to praise him too? So we praise him only when he does something to us? No. Praise him in season and out of season. I love Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They said, even if our God does not save us, we shall not worship idol. Whether our God come to rescue them or not, that they will not worship idol. That's the kind of faith God wants from us. The faith of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The kind of faith of Daniel. When you stand firm, the Lord that sees in secret will reward you. We keep on exalting the Lord. We keep on praising Him. When we are praising the Lord, even when we are going through situations that are unbearable, you are shunning the devil, you are, you are praising the Lord, and the devil is not, uh, is, is not happy. Because when the devil wants to make you mad, and you're showing the devil that uh, he doesn't even care, he will be tired of you. Because the devil wants to distract us and make us not to praise God or worship him. He may bring something that is sick, that makes you sick or something of that nature. And you and you remove your attention from God and, and the devil will say, See, I told you. And they start mocking God. But if we behave like Job, in spite of what he was going through, he stood firm. And you look at book of Job 42, you see the whole blessing coming back. We may not be so strong and fair like Job, but the little faith you have, God sees your effort. God sees our effort. The psalmist says in verse 3, Lord, you brought me up from the realm of the dead. You spared my life from going down to the pit. You see, how, how the psalmist was describing what he went through. Many people might have gone through this situation in the past, and he survived. I, I raise my hands of blessing upon the Lord tonight on your behalf. For Lord has rescued you. For God has delivered you from the dungeon. For God has saved you and your family from accidents. For God has saved you from enemies. You went home and you came back safe and sound. To God be the glory. There are many moments that you can say, God has saved me from different difficult situations. Start thanking God at this hour. Remember those dangerous times you have been endangered by one or another or by enemies and God saved you. Let it be a moment that will draw you closer to God and you extol Him. You exalt Him. You exalt Him. You lift Him up in praises for sparing your life Sing praises to God. Sing praises to His holy name. And even the psalmist says His anger does not last. But you can imagine human beings, when we are angry, it takes days and years and months for us to calm down. But the psalmist says, in the five, his anger lasts only a moment, a moment. But his favor lasts lifetime. Book of Psalm 30, verse 5. His anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing come in the morning. Look at that. When one is with the Lord, even though you may be going through turbulence, 
But the Lord is assuring us that there will be sunshine after rain. Will you be able to endure throughout the night and be able to know that that there will be rejoicing in the morning? Our security is assured in the Lord. The servant said, Lord, when you favored me, you made my royal mountains stand firm. But when you hid your face, I was dismayed. You can imagine. When you switch off the light in your house, every place becomes dark. When you switch on the light, there is light. So think about it. When God switch off our life, we become lifeless. When we go to bed, we don't even know what happens when we're sleeping. And all of a sudden, we wake up in the land of the living again. When you are driving home, you know where you are going. But some people don't know where they are going. When they're under the influence. So you ask yourself, what cheers it up? Is it God or substance? Substance may be temporal, but God is everlasting. That thing that is temporal may ruin your life for life, may destroy your heart or kidney or liver. But the law that sustains our life prolong our longevity and find and give us solace with his presence. Book of Psalm 30 verse 8 says, To you, Lord, I called. To the Lord I cried for mercy. What is gain if I am silenced? If I go down to the pit? Talking to the Lord that death, that his death does not mean anything. Why will he allow him to die? Why will he allow his enemies to laugh at him? Personalize your God And talk to your God as if to say you're talking to your friend. Make God your friend. And talk to him as you can talk to your good friend. You see how the psalmist was talking to God. And they were having good time. What gain? What is gain if I am silent, Lord? If I go down to the pit, would the dust praise you? Of course, anything can praise God. But look at the human language he was using for God. But it is better that he's alive to praise him. And he said, here, Lord, as if to say God needs the hearing aid, and he's telling God to hear. Hear, Lord, and be merciful to me. The God that created ears here. But the human language, our human language looks somehow. Sometimes we think that God does not hear. And we are calling the attention of the Lord to listen to us. That's what the psalmist is echoing in verse 10. Hear, Lord, and be merciful to me. Lord, be my help. I think they say God does not understand that he is. He's still around. He's calling the attention of the Lord. We are human. So call the attention of the Lord in prayer. And in verse 11, it says, You turn my willing into dancing. Look at that. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Look at that. God makes us to dance. God brings joy to us. 
my sister lost the husband and, and uh, she she grieved and uh, it took her time to grieve for the loss of the husband and then uh, after the duration according to custom and tradition he went and removed the sackcloth and then uh, other traditional uh, uh, Christian tradition was made and she came back, called me on the phone to bless her. I blessed her. And she started her charismatic ministration again with the fulfillment that she has already grieved and mourned uh, for the demise of the husband. And so she told me that, uh, Father, God has brought me back to feel joy to walk in his vineyard again. I say, okay, hold on to that spirit. Because sometimes when something you love was taken away from you, the whole world ends. I don't know what you are feeling at this hour. But look at the psalmist saying that God has removed my sackcloth. I don't know what the sackcloth will be for you and your family. But tonight, be in the shoe of the psalmist and say, God has removed my sackcloth. God has removed my, my sorrow. God has removed my sadness. Look at the book of Psalm 30, verse 11. And talk to God in the language you are feeling. And even if you are going through grief and loss, even if you are going through pain, say to God, remove my sackcloth, remove my pain, and give me joy, give my soul peace, that my heart may sing your praise again and not be staying silently and not to be silent. Talk to God. Personalize your God. Talk to Him in the language you will understand. Lord, my God, do not allow me to be silent again. I want to move my lips again in prison. Book of Psalm 40, verse 2 says, He brought me up out of the pit of destruction, out of the miry clay, and he set my feet upon a rock, making my footsteps firm. Look at that. It is only God that can do that for you, child of God. It is only God that can do it for you. Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2 says, As he spoke to me, the Spirit entered me, and set me on my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. May you only hear the voice of God in your heart in the mighty name of Jesus. May God remove hallucination in your life. May God remove that uh, evil spirit around you. May you hear the voice of wisdom in the mighty name of Jesus. Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 24 says, The Spirit then entered me, and made me stand on my feet. And he spoke to me and said to me, Go, shut yourself up in your house, and God will speak to you. Sometimes we, we feel that way. God will tell you to go into your room and pray. The same Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 12 says, Then the Spirit lifted me up, and I heard a great rumbling sound behind me. Bless be the glory of the Lord in his place. Look at that. When you are closer to God, God talks to you in many ways. God speaks to you in many ways. Will you be able to understand the language of God when he speaks to you? We pray for spirit of discernment. Book of Daniel chapter 8 verse 18 says, Now, while he was talking with me, I sank into a deep sleep with my face to the ground, but it touched me and made me stand upright. 
Sometimes you feel down and you don't know what makes you to be lifted up when you, after sleeping. Sometimes you may feel down and God will put you to sleep. And when you wake up, you, are, you feel better and stronger. God is with you, child of God. But sometimes you feel that you're alone. You're not alone, child of God, but that's the way you feel. That's okay. But all you have to know is that you are not alone. The God that made heaven and earth is with you. Even in your turbulent weather, the Lord is with you. You are not alone, child of God. You are not alone. You may feel alone, but you are not alone. The Lord is with you. Your Lord, your God is with you. The Lord your God is with you to lift you up, to cheer you up. When you think that you're alone, go into the scripture and draw strength. First Samuel chapter two verse eight says, He raises the poor from the dust, he lifts the needy from the ash heap. To make them sit with nobles and inherit a seat of honor. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and He set the world on, earth, on them. Lord raises up the poor. Think about your humble beginning. So many of us, we are many in the family, from a, a family of eight children. A children or seven children, twelve children, depending on. And you ask yourself, how did you train all these children? You started with nothing and you have something now. God has sense of humor. God will never abandon you. God is with you in your turbulence. God is with you in your situation. Book of Psalm 145, verse 14 says, The Lord sustains all who fall and raises up all who are bowed down. Sometimes you think that you are falling down and you never rise again. The Lord is saying that you will survive. The Lord is saying that you will survive. Book of Psalm 146, verse 8 says, The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord raises up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. Sometimes people think that uh, evil things happen to the righteous. But God knows what's going on with you. Just like in case of Job. Sometimes you think that God abandons you. Some people say, oh, why must God abandon me since I'm praising him? God's ways are not your ways. Sometimes you'll be saying, oh, I want to be the divine instrument. You don't know what, you mean, what, what it means to be a divine instrument. When God starts using you as a divine instrument, will you understand? The book of Psalm 41 verse 10 says, but you, O oh Lord, be gracious to me and raise me up, that I may repair them. God prepares you for war. God may use you to shame your enemies. Whatever that is going on in your life, all you have to do is, God, show me the way. Listen to the message God is telling you. Second Samuel chapter 22 verse 49 says, A God brings me out from my enemies and even lifts me above those who rise up against you. You will steal me from the violent man. Look at that. When enemies are when you are surrounded by enemies, God delivers you from them. 
As we can see in Psalm 18, verse 48, they deliver me from my enemies. Surely you lift me above those who rise up against me. You rescue me from the violent man. God does all this because he loves us. He shows himself in many ways. Even when you are thinking that God has abandoned you, or that God has abandoned you, he has not abandoned you. God is at work in you. You may not see that God is at work with you. Let's go to prayer. Present before the Lord your situation. Present the Lord before the Lord what pulls you down. What brings you so low that you don't want to come out from your house? You don't want to mix up with people. Tell God about that situation. Present before the Lord that situation in your life. Is it your child that is uh, giving you headache? When you remember his or her own problem, you're having sleepless nights. Tell God about it. Tell God about your situation. You are carrying your cross. And it's weighing you down. You don't know how to rise. You don't know how to come out from your situation. God knows the answer. Present before the Lord that situation that has been pulling you down. Present your case before the Lord. What shall I do to follow Jesus? What shall I do? What shall I do? What shall I do to follow Jesus? I renounce myself. I will take up my cross to follow Jesus. Take up my cross. Take up my cross. I will take up my cross to follow Jesus. Jesus will give me life. Take up my cross to follow Jesus. Take up my cross. Take up my cross. I will take up my cross to follow Jesus. And Jesus will give me life. Oh, battle for Sunday. Oh, when oh, oh, bah, for oh, oh, bah, for oh, bah, for can get so when Jesus gain a mondo, Jesus gain a mondo, what shall I do? To follow Jesus, what shall I do? What shall I do? What shall I do to follow Jesus? I renounce myself to Him. Father, we have come to surrender. All our weaknesses for you to lift us up tonight. Enemies are pulling your children down. Sickness has pulled them out from walk. Father, heal your children once again. 
Domestic violence has put them down. Father, heal them. Bring peace to that family. Restore back what was lost, Father. Put smile on their faces, Father. Let their businesses boom again. Wipe away the tears of your people that are grieving for the loss of their loved ones. Open your ears to answer their prayers. Open your ears to listen to their petitions, Father. Reassure them of your blessedness. Reassure them of hope again. Heal the sick among us. Take care of that migrant. Take care of those pains. So many are afraid of one thing or the other. Some don't have their green card. Some don't have even change of status. They don't have work authorization. And every day, their spirit is down. Father, lift them up. Cheer them up. Some have been going for their citizenship and they have been filling exams. Father, cheer them up. Let there be breakthrough again. May they pass the exams in the mighty name of Jesus. Cheer your children up again, Father. Put a smile on their face. Let peace reign in the land. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going ahead to bless water and salt at this hour. Father, we thank you for giving us salt and water. I exercise you living water. I exercise you in salt. But you no longer be ordinary salt, you no longer be ordinary water. And I be filled with the sacramental grace to heal the sick, to deliver the people that are tortured and tormented by one which is a wizard. If there is any libation incantation against your children, through this blessed water and salt, I pray that you neutralize it and he let those evil forces and prosperous and powers against them in the mighty name of Jesus. Wherever they are touching and tormenting your children, wherever they have gathered, scattered them. Now this uh, sacramental grace, you are pouring upon this water and salt to be able to fortify them in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Open your hands, Father. We thank you for giving us our destiny. We thank you for brightening our star. Continue to sharpen and shine our, our stars and brighten our stars. Oh God of love, bless our destiny. 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 We're knocking at your door. We're knocking with prayer. Oh, oh God of love, bless your destiny. Father, brighten the star of your children. Bless their destiny when they touch their children at this hour. May they be blessed and protected. When they put the salt, they will use their hands to put salt in the water that they will drink and sprinkle in their house. Let it be blessed. Whatever they touch their hand, be blessed. Their businesses will be blessed. Their job will be blessed. Their family will be blessed with good health of mind and body. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
child of God who puts salt into the water. May the mixture of salt and water be made in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us never. For that is the kingdom, the power, and glory of yours now and forever. Amen. Father, we thank you for your allowing us to use your name to bless the salt and water. May the mixture of salt and water made in your name give us that spiritual synergy that empowers us to drive away evil forces, both from and abroad. When your children are sprinkling this water and salt, blessing your name, and calling upon you to fight their hidden battle, Father, fight their battle. When they are calling upon you to bless their family, both from and abroad, Father, stretch out your spiritual blessing upon them. Bless their home and abroad. Bless their siblings and friends. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. And blessing the Bible, Father, we thank you for giving us your word in the scripture. That your scripture is the food of life. We continue to bring fruition and the feed your children spiritually. I pray that your 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 scripture, your word in the scripture will continue to bless your children. And when we call upon your name and open the scripture, may you reveal who you are to us and continue to bond with us. When we use the Bible to fight the battle, Father, answer our prayers. Father, we pray that you continue to reveal yourself to us, that we shall continue to abide in you. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. In blessing the candle for the new month. Loving Father, we thank you for blessing us in this month. As we are about to enter into the new month, Father, we bless the candles that will usher us into the new month. Let it be a candle of peace. Let there be a candle of light to light our way into the new month, to usher us into the light of Christ. As light symbolizes the light of Christ, may when we place it at the altar where we call upon your name as one family, may you answer us, answer our petition. Let your light bring joy and peace. Let the light of God bring love. Let there be no darkness in relationships. Let there be no darkness in our homes. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bless all the sacramentals tonight. Father, we thank you for giving us our mother Mary. He said in Luke chapter 1, 48, that all generations shall call me blessed. As they are saying, the beats, rose with beats, and calling her blessed. The favor of our mother Mary is interceding for us and following us. As we are calling her blessed, let our houses and families be blessed. May we be blessed in our works. May we be blessed in our schools. May your children be blessed in their area of work and school. In the name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm blessing all the scapulars. Blessing all the, the booklets and pamphlets for prayer. A divine mercy for the precious blood. Or for St. Anthony, Sacred Heart of Jesus and Mary, and all the saints that we call upon Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the gift of the image, the images of prayer and the crucifix and the, the finger roses and all the medals. I thank you for the scapula. I pray that you bless all of them. The ones we mention and the ones you have not mentioned, you know all of them. Bless one, them one by one. The image of uh, Archangel Michael, to fight the hidden battle for your children, that your children will be able to imitate the, 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 uh, the saints uh, whose pictures they are having in prayer. May you, my God, bless them and repel every trespass and power in their houses. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. At uh, this hour, I'm blessing the oil. Father, we thank you for the gift of oil. Said in, in Jeremiah, is there no barren in Gilead that my children's roots are no longer healed? Father, let this be an oil, a spiritual, sacred oil for them. 
when they rub it upon their body, may the grace of God follow them. May, they, may you protect their star. May you protect their destiny. Father, I thank you for the grace you have given us in the oil. Let this be oil of, of healing, oil that break the chain and the yoke of the enemies and repel and rebook all prosperous and powers around our body because the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this hour, I'm blessing your altar for prayer. Father, in the Old Testament, your prophets uh, and kings, they were able to have the altar where they, they meet you. I pray that you, my Lord, the new covenant in the Lord, that all the altars in this line will be blessed, that you, my God, be able to have your presence there. When they come as one family to knock at your door, answer their petitions, Jesus, you say, I know my sheep, my sheep knows me. May you recognize their altar and, and bless them in the name of the Lord, the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm blessing all your houses from the foundation to the rooftop. Father, you have given your children these houses respectively. Let it be house of prayer, house of love, house of peace, free from COVID, free from any type of evil forces, free from any type of ailment or disease, that your children will come in and have rest. Not a haggling, not an enmity, but peace and love in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this hour, I am blessing all the medications. Father, you have given us the gift of the medicine to the doctors. I pray that you bless their medication. Let there be no side effect, rather, let it be uh, what it was meant for, for the healing of the body and soul. As they drink it, may they drink life. Let it not cause them sickness, but health. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. I am blessing the sick among us. Father, we thank you for being the God that heals. When down your anointing upon the sick at this hour, may you heal the sick among them. Heal them, O Father. Heal the children that are sick, that are already in bed at this hour. That I heal our elders, heal the parents, heal our grandparents, heal the in laws and friends, put from our blood, may their, their sickness turn into joy because you have healed them. May it not end in death but in praise in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, you are the one that gave us the children. I pray that you bless all our children at this hour. Some of them are sleeping. Some of them are awake doing their silent. I pray that you bless all your children. May your, may, your, may your glory rain upon them so that they will be fruitful, so that they will be good children that are full of obedience and respect for parents and elders. May they remain focused and not be distracted in school. May them be free from cyber bullying and peer pressure. May they be alive, free from all this shooting and living around. May they learn the culture of the family, where they came from. May they be responsible children in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, we thank you for you tonight. We pray that you continue to bless us one by one. Bless the incense that we use for prayer. Bless every article of prayer that we are using to pray. Bless all of them. The ones we mentioned are the ones you ever mentioned. You bless all of them. Your children are waiting for this day. Let your adoration bring us favor. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.